Hello everyone, at fellow business owners and anyone who might be watching this video. I am Christy Van Pay and I own a company called Prosperity Bookkeeping. And oftentimes we get questions from people who are doing their own books. Um, how do I record a line of credit on my books? Or if they don't ask the question, we do a review of their books and we see that sometimes they um, put it on the books incorrectly and it works for them. They don't necessarily know that it's not right, but when we go to reconcile the account, we see that um, it, it just needs a few little tweaks here and there. So I thought because we're in a time right now where people are getting loans for trying to hold their businesses over through this crisis, that this may, may be a good time to do a video on how to properly record a line of credit on your books. So. That being said, we'll dive right in. I'm using a sample company here and I am doing this in QuickBooks Online. However, you can do this in almost all accounting software. So there should be no limitations for you as long as you are able to add and remove or change any of your GL accounts. A GL account is a category that you use to group your income and expenses into certain categories or your assets or liabilities or equity. Um, and so for instance, if you have a rent payment, you're gonna put it into the rent account or a payroll payment would go into the payroll account and those are called GL accounts. So what we're gonna do is um, show you what GL accounts are required for a line of credit. Now the first misconception is when somebody goes out and gets a line of credit, if they haven't actually used any of the funds yet, they record the amount of the line of credit on their books. So if they got a $500,000 loan of credit, they go and they might go and put a loan on their books for $500,000. But that isn't actually how it works. You actually only record the amount that you've borrowed. So once you take your first draw on the line of credit, that's when you're going to make your first entry. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to you need to create a chart of uh, a GL account, I'm sorry, for the line of credit. So in QuickBooks Online, you can get to the chart of accounts through the gear wheel here. You can also get to it down here. There's an accounting tab, but my picture's in the way there. So we're just gonna go this way. We're gonna create a new account. And a line of credit is a current liability because most of the time you're planning on paying that back within 365 days. So we're gonna go with other current liability and we're gonna choose a line of credit here. And I like to name my line of credit specifically because if you ever have more than one, it's just easier to keep them straight. So maybe if it's at your bank or whatever, you could say bank X, wow, can't type, line of credit or LLC. And then you're gonna save and close that. So you're ready to borrow against the line of credit and you wanna take $50,000 out. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to create um, you can do this two different ways. You could do a journal entry, but if you're not comfortable with journal entries, and generally we try to teach people stay away from them if you can, um, unless you are um, very familiar with how to do them. So we're going to do this actually as a bank deposit. So we're going to click the new tab over here and then bank deposit. We're going to come in and this is going to go into our checking account. And um, Sorry, I, got, I had to let the dog out for a minute there, so I got distracted and lost my spot. So we're in the bank deposit window here. Now, just for right now, just ignore these. These are um, payments that were received that are sitting here waiting to be deposited. You may or may not have those, so I'm actually going to um, just skip over those. But down here, we're going to add funds to this deposit. And here you can put in the name of your bank if you want to. So. Um, let's just say that this bank is one of these because I don't want to create something new. It would actually be a vendor. Tanya's nursery doesn't make any sense, but pretend that's a bank. And then here we're going to put that these funds are coming from our line of credit. So bank X line of credit. And then over here we're going to put the $50,000. Okay, so we're depositing $50,000. We're depositing it to the checking account and it came from the bank line of credit. So we're gonna save this. And when we do that, if we go to our balance sheet, clicking reports here on the left-hand side and then balance sheet, we will now see that we have a liability on the books for $50,000 for our line of credit. Now, when you make a payment to your line of credit, sometimes it's gonna be an interest-only payment so if that's the case, 
you're gonna record the payment. And this was the name of my bank, weird as that is. And this is gonna go to interest expense because that is, that is what this was for. Um, so we'll put that there. And let's say it was $46.98, so that's fine. So we're gonna save and close that. But then we wanna pay down some of the principal now, so we're gonna make another loan payment. And this one is gonna be for $500. And you have to split out how much of it is interest and how much of it is principal. So you'll be able to see that if you're using online banking at all, you should be able to see that breakdown of how much is um, interest and how much is principal. You may not be able to see it at the time you make the payment, but later on, if you log into online banking after they've received the payment, they will most of the time show you the breakdown of how much was applied to principal and how much was applied to um, interest. Or if not, hopefully you're getting loan statements on a monthly basis and you can use those loan statements to see what the breakdown was and then just come back into your transaction and split it out. So in this case, maybe our interest was $50 and the other 450 got applied to the principal. So that is going to go to the account called Bank X line of credit for $450. Now, if I go back to my balance sheet, I will be able to see <clears throat> that I now only owe $49,550 on my line of credit. And that's pretty much all you have to do with a line of credit in order to properly record that on your books. But if you get stuck or you have some type of a unique situation and you have questions, always feel free to reach out to us. You can either visit our website at prosperitybookkeeping.net. There are two Ks in bookkeeping. Or, and there's a contact us page there, so you can contact us through there. Otherwise, you can always give us a call at 920-309-6660. Thank you and have a wonderful day.